Climate change has caused a five-fold surge in weather-related disasters over the past 50 years, according to the World Meteorological Organization. 지난 50년 동안 기후 변화로 인한 날씨 관련 재해가 다섯 배나 증가했다는 세계 기상 기구 WMO의 연구 보고가 발표됐습니다. The UN Weather Agency has found that Southeast Asian countries saw a 40% reduction in harmful air particles in 2020. 세계 기상 기구가 2020년에 동남아시아 지역의 공기 중 유해 입자 수치가 40% 정도 감소했다는 내용을 공개했습니다. Water-related hazards have topped the list of natural disasters with the highest human losses in the past 50 years. 지난 50년간 가장 큰 인명 피해를 발생시켰던 자연 재해는 물과 관련한 재해였던 것으로 드러났습니다. Dragonflies are reportedly making their way north of Britain and Ireland, and experts say the expansion is an indication of global warming. 잠자리가 영국과 아일랜드의 북쪽으로 이동하고 있습니다. 전문가들은 이 이동이 지구 온난화의 영향인 것으로 분석했습니다. And those are our morning headlines today. Well, as you can tell, I have in the studio with me Ray. 그럼 지금부터 앞서 들려드린 오늘의 주요 headlines. 뉴스카스터 레이와 함께 더 자세히 짚어봅니다. Climate change has caused a five-fold surge in weather-related disasters over the past 50 years, according to the World Meteorological Organization. Okay, tell us about it. Well, this report shows that weather-related disasters have occurred on average at a rate of one per day over the past five decades. Mm. Now, here are some other stats. These disasters have killed 115 people and have caused $202 million in losses on a daily basis. Oh my goodness, the the figures are staggering. But what sort of weather-related disasters are we talking about? Anything weather-related, usually storms, floods, Floods, that type of thing. Okay, yeah. And I mean, in the past 50 years, if we look at humankind, that's very, very recent, isn't it? Oh, ab- absolutely. And uh, one thing that that, um, that we have seen here is that the number of deaths because of the greater number of storms and floods and droughts as well, mm-hmm. the number of deaths have actually fallen quite sharply. Okay. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. Scientists say that, that climate change uh, and more extreme weather, better reporting, these are behind the rise in mm. these extreme cases. The so fact that we're able to report them. The number of weather related diseases has gone up. However, the fatalities have gone down. Exactly. Okay. Even mm. though there still are quite a lot of yeah. fatalities. Is that because of some of the warning systems that have been improved? That's what they think. Yeah. Exactly. They think okay. a lot of the improvements in warning systems have helped limit the deaths. And Mm -hmm. and that makes sense, right? If people are aware that something might happen, they're able to better prepare for it. Mm. When we say five-fold, that means five times. Five times. And you can use, you can say two-fold, three-fold, you can say any number. Mm. 뭔가가 이제 두 배, 세 배, 네배 이렇게 늘어났을 때 two-fold increase or three-fold surge, uh, four-fold um, uptick, 뭐 등등등. 뒤에 이제 명사 하나 쓰시면 되는데요. 앞서서 이 fourfold, fivefold, sixfold 이 단어들을 쓰면은 이제 몇 배나 이렇게 됐다라는 뜻이 되겠습니다. So we've seen a fivefold surge or an increase in weather-related disasters in the past 50 years. Usually, when you use the word surge, it's quite a big increase. So five times, that's quite big. That's, that's quite a surge. Big increase. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're going to leave that story there and move on to headline number two. The UN Weather Agency has found that Southeast Asian countries saw a 40% reduction in harmful air particles in 2020. Oh, well, last year, of course, many countries were under lockdown and uh, not many cars or factories were operating. Uh, Is that a reason for the the air particles getting 
uh, less. The, absolutely. Yeah. So these the, these harmful airborne particles, as they're called, these are caused by traffic and energy production. Mm. So as you mentioned, because of lockdowns and the economic downturn, they weren't as active. So then my question would be, does that mean when all the factories are now back in operation and more cars are on the roads, are we going to see the air quality go bad again? More than likely. It's possible yes, then, isn't it? Yes, yeah, more yeah. than likely. China, Europe and North America, they also saw emission reductions and improved air quality during the pandemic's first year. Mm. But as we know, with with factories reopening and people traveling again, it might not, it, the trend might not continue. Mm, Probably won't. Yeah. Um, so I understand the UN Weather Agency uh, released this report and it it, it actually looked at many different parts of the world. It wasn't just Southeast Asia, but of course, uh, that's closer to us. And so we're focusing on that here. But, um, you know, other parts of the world saw similar things happening, the air clearing a little bit, I guess. Yeah, we saw air clearing, but we we also saw a lot of um, a lot of other events mm. that affects air quality in a negative way. Such as? Sandstorms. So in June 2020, there was the Godzilla dust cloud. This was the largest African dust storm on record. Mm -hmm. And then something that we've talked about a lot is all the wildfires we saw last year and this year from Australia, North America, even Mm -hmm. up in Siberia. And these events have worsened air quality significantly. So Mm -hmm. on one hand, we have, because of the lockdowns, we saw a reduction in harmful air particles, human-caused emissions. But because of climate change, we're seeing these, you know, these extreme weather events that are having a negative impact on air quality. I remember reading an article quite a while back about the wildfires uh, that happened in Australia. Because of that, there were plumes of smoke traveling around the earth. Yeah, I saw that too. Oh my goodness. And it reached America. You know, it was it was literally traveling around the globe. And that's and that's what these uh, these sand and dust storms do the same thing. Oh. They'll travel from continent to continent <sighs> as well. Mm. All right. Well, I mean, if we look at the headline itself, it does seem to be good news in a way. Because, good news because, for Southeast Asian yeah, countries. Because last year, Southeast Asia saw a reduction in harmful air particles. But as you said and pointed out, uh, we will have to wait and see how things pan out in 2021 and ahead. Beyond, but, yeah. yeah we, beyond, you have yeah. to take that headline in context. We, yeah, absolutely. Headlines. I hope me that headline number three. Water-related hazards have topped the list of natural disasters with the highest human losses in the past 50 years. A lot has happened in the past 50 years. I mean, in the first headline, we found out that there was a, a five-fold surge in weather-related disasters. But this one actually says that it was water-related hazards. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, tell, tell us uh, what we know. What has the WMO told us. Well, this new report by the WMO says that droughts are responsible for the most deaths around the world in the past five decades. Get this, 650,000 deaths. Storms have caused um, a lot, but not quite as many. Uh, They've put it around Mm 577,000. And floods have led to more than 58,000 deaths. Wow. So, I mean, droughts being very dry conditions. Very dry um, conditions. And if we think about countries that are agrarian, farming countries, when there's droughts, they're not able to get as much food, if Mm -hmm. any food, and that leads to starvation. Yeah, and uh, fatalities, as you just mentioned there. So, I mean, droughts also a sort of water-related hazard, uh, according to the headline. Lack of water, I guess we could say. Definitely, yeah. And then floods um, and storms as well. Wow. Uh, So this has all happened in the past five decades. That's right. And the the report estimates that estimates that the top 10 events that they've examined, and this is between 1970 and 2019, storms Mm -hmm. accounted for approximately $521 billion in economic losses. Can you believe that? And floods accounted for quite a bit less, but still a lot of money, Mm. $115 billion. Europe saw a lot of weather-related 
uh, events happen last year. But it's been the case for several years, hasn't it? 50 years, right. Floods yeah. and storms have resulted in the largest losses in Europe at a cost of $377.5 billion. Actually, in 2002, there was a flood in Germany that caused nearly $16.5 billion in losses. And this represents the single costliest event in Europe during that 50-year period. Yes, well, these weather-related and water-related hazards are not only costing countries money, but lives as well, apparently. Okay, let's check our final headline. Dragonflies are reportedly making their way north of Britain and Ireland. And experts say the expansion is an indication of global warming. Mm. We see a lot of dragonflies here in Korea. They're nice. Um, they and yeah, nice. I like dra- dragonflies. But in the north of Britain, it's very rare to see dragonflies. And yet now it looks like they've decided to live there. They're moving on up. Yeah, right? absolutely. So this, so this report, again, based on uh, 50 years of studying, study, studying dragonflies, as well as their close relative, damselflies, um, this report found that warming temperatures have allowed dragonflies to spread across the UK and Ireland at a really remarkable rate. And now some of these species are apparently regularly spotted as far north as Scotland. Oh, wow. Uh, and you said it's an indication of global warming. So... Uh, I don't know whether this should be seen as a positive or a negative. I think more of a negative. So Mm. uh, according to Eleanor Culver, she's a conservation officer with the British Dragonfly Society. Uh, They're the ones who conducted this research. She said that because uh, dragonflies are cold-blooded insects, um, they're very susceptible to changes in their environment. So uh, historically in the UK, they haven't seen a great diversity of dragonfly species, but as the climate's warming and everything's becoming warmer um, these species are now these species are traditionally found in warmer areas Mm. south of england or in europe now they're starting to move further north because it's warmer yeah and this isn't simply about the four-winged insect i mean seeing the dragonflies move their habitat up north as you said, shows us that the temperature is warming, global warming is doing something in that part of the world. And that that is interlinked with so many other environmental issues. We could see glaciers melting eventually. And the other um, thing to mention here is this is not just a... British phenomenon. This is not just something that's happening in the UK when it comes to dragonflies. It's actually happening all over the world. So um, a co-author of this study said in North America, the same thing is happening. So uh, certain dragonfly species Mm. that are usually in warmer temperatures, warmer climates are also being found up north. Yeah. So, I mean, while they are pretty to look at, uh, this could be a warning sign from Mother Nature. Yeah, a bit of a harbinger of yeah. global warming. A harbinger. Uh, a harbinger of global warming. All right. Well, that's a look at our headlines today.